you're going to have to deal with this issue. And, and all other prime ministers have had to do that. And I think whoever does become prime minister will be the fourth prime minister for Nicola Sturgeon uh, since she's been first minister. And again, let's talk more about this. David Griffiths uh, joins us now, contributor at the majority. Good evening to you, sir. Oh yeah, lovely to be on the show. And what, what did you think of my how do you solve a problem like Nicola Sturgeon? I thought it was par excellence. Thank you very much, sir. Well, never... I never get that from my producers. They're always like, see, I've told you once, I've told you five times, don't sing. Our viewers, our listeners don't like it. It's it's just terrible. It's an insult to everybody that listens. Oh, but thank you. They wrote it clearly. I know. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. But look, hey, jokes aside, um, this is going to be an issue that every Prime Minister uh, has had to deal with since, uh, I was going to say, even before Nicola Sturgeon was First Minister. Uh, mm. It's a tricky one because regardless of whatever reason they have to meet or they want to meet the First Minister, they should indeed meet with the First Minister of Scotland, she will always take it right back to uh, another Scottish independence referendum. That's correct. She will because it's all she has. All she can offer the people in Scotland is this far-fetched nebulous idea that they can achieve freedom and presumably enhance prosperity by breaking up the United Kingdom, which is an entirely false premise as any economist will tell you. So all she really has is this appeal to people's hearts, minds rather than to their uh, intellects, to say, oh, wouldn't it be great if we were free? No, it would be terrible, it would be disastrous. So my hope is that the new Prime Minister, whoever it is, carries on very much in the same vein that Liz Truss has set out, which is Possibly ignoring is not the most diplomatic choice, and worse, they should certainly ignore any further demands for another independence referendum because it is not needed, it's not wanted, and it's not happening. Uh, how how do you go about though ignoring somebody who's now trying to go above their heads? Oh, okay, really quickly, but however, I've got to say, uh, David, we'll come back to you after the news. But yes, how, how do you go about ignoring the surgeon? Well, I think what you do is you don't ignore her as in you don't answer her. You just reply to her by saying. We understand your demands for another referendum. We would point out that the Scottish people are likely to remain in the UK, and that is the position, and, and it's not going to change. So either talk about something else, or else, frankly, there is, there is nothing further to discuss. That's how you do it. It is very much within the powers of Westminster to withhold uh, the, the uh, legislation which is necessary for any further secession attempts. They should not be allowing it to happen, and they should carry on exactly enforcing and reinforcing that message. Okay, David, stick with us. 